eight years. Eight years. I cried the first day I woke up here. I remember it was a freezing New Year's day and I just spent it questioning why the hell I left everything I knew and everything that was comfortable and easier. Asking myself, did I just make a huge mistake? Looking back, it's weird because I recognize that person I was looking at this footage, but it's more like when you're back in your hometown, you know, and you see someone that you went to school with or you played with when you were a kid across the road and you sort of recognize them, but you don't really know anything about them anymore. There's no glue, you know, like there's nothing you find relatable in each other anymore. I still don't really know why I chose to come here, but all I know is that I was fresh off the boat at 23 after graduating. I had no contacts except for one uni friend and maybe one or two acquaintances that I didn't know very well. But what I do remember is that unshakable knowing that I had to come here. And maybe it was the workings of some unseen force, I don't know. Whatever it was, I just knew that there was something for me here, something for me to discover about myself. The way I thought I was grown here at 23, um, but now I can really see my progression from sort of an adolescent into the woman that I am now. <laughs> and I think for anyone, in their early or even mid 20s watching this video even though you may feel like an adult doing adult things trust me you're still a baby and you don't need to have it all figured out i think a big part of this progressive journey for me is how new york forced me to be an innovator just teaching me how not to wait for an opportunity to be handed to me but how to actually create my own opportunities and the ability to create something out of nothing. I was genuinely operating on blind faith, endless optimism, and the tenacity and determination of a hungry wolf. New York is the perfect place for these types of people. It's one of those special kinds of places that wears you down, only just to somehow build you back up again. On hindsight, sounds a little toxic, but you stay for those glimmers of magic that are just so unique to New York. I do see how almost a decade here has sort of taken the childlike youth from my face and in its place sort of carved this new, more mature mold from it. Something sturdier, something more assertive, perhaps. And I don't know if it's just a New York thing or a moving far away anywhere in your 20s thing, but I do appreciate the absolutely wild ride New York has given me. While I've been here, I think every part of my identity or anything that has ever made me feel safe has either been challenged or stripped away at some point. The career I thought I wanted, literally something I've been working for since I was 10 years old, yep gone, a 10 year relationship, yep, that's gotta go. How I show up in the world, the space I'm willing to take up, yeah, that's gotta, that's gotta change. And now it's time to go. I have been meaning to go for a while, um, but as I've concluded, there really is no perfect or right feeling time to leave a city so full of fun and opportunity. So how did I know when to go, you ask? I knew when I realized I just wasn't growing and when I wasn't being challenged. That hungry wolf, yeah, she felt well fed. I had gotten to the last subway stop that New York had for me. I was comfortable and life by my standards felt successful. And comfort is nice, it's good, it's even needed. And trust me, I savored it. But you'll know when you're beginning to overstay your welcome. You know, when there's no growth and no sense of expansion for the better. And this apartment, God, did I love this bloody apartment. This place witnessed a relationship, a breakup, a pandemic, a whole lot of self-growth and self-love in between, and then another love story and another relationship. It's a very full circle feeling to my time here and I think an appropriate bookend. Loved making this space feel truly my own. For the past four years, it really has been the first place I've lived that has felt expansive enough to really hold all the facets of my creativity and my essence. Here, I've felt safe, I've felt protected, and even nurtured in so many ways. Uh, 
back to my true nature. We're finding parts of myself I think that I had lost a long time ago that I didn't know I missed. And because of that, I think this was the last thing outside of myself that I was having difficulty letting go of. I'm sure a lot of you would associate this apartment with me and I made it very much a part of my identity and safety in so many ways, just as a home and a uh, efficient workspace. I'd worked my way up the ranks of these detachment levels within my own life, but I could still feel that last claw hanging on in this apartment. It really felt like the last part of my identity here that I had to learn to let go of. As with all attachments that are no longer conducive to your growth, I knew that the universe was gently nudging me that the time was closing in to let this one go. This year has taught me a lot about facing fears. Here I am editing the last lingering bit of my old identity, all of the old unrecognizable parts of myself. And now I'm just making my way through this liminal time, this liminal space in transit to the next chapter. The most surprising thing, honestly, is I feel kind of relieved. Now that the tie has been cut, I'm left with a blank slate. That's kind of exciting. And as all artists know, sometimes there is nothing more intimidating than staring at a blank canvas. But I'm ready to paint. All right, enough deep stuff. Let's watch this whole move out chaos situation, shall we? little flower clips. I feel like I'm having a bit of a, a Copenhagen girly outfit moment. In the pajama pants, playing her classic white cause tea and my lover Sunday perfect crew neck sweatshirt. Absolutely no explanation for why. Back to like 24, 25 degrees Celsius for the next few days. Glasses on because I really don't feel like being too close to you right now. I'm feeling very bare and vulnerable under here. Let's go to La Cantine. Simple surf in there. If you want to get that. Our neighbours, like my direct neighbours next door. Lovely couple. Uh, we're having lunch as well. Always the way, isn't it? You have like really good conversations so you get to know people even more right when you're leaving. The time has come. It has been so hard keeping this secret. Girls, moving on to the next chapter, guys. And I am so nervous. I'm so scared. But I'm also really excited and happy. Four years in this beautiful apartment today is the day we start packing it's come down to the last weekend it's thursday like i knew it was going to end up this way most of my month has just been taken up with work birthday stuff goodbye the way i've kind of timed it i've given myself some time to digest this change myself like this is going to be probably going up i'm thinking maybe two weeks after I've actually left the apartment. I feel like you guys have honestly grown up with me in this apartment. It was my dream place to live. I love unconventional spaces. I love places with character. I made it my dream space, you know. She was a little shabby when I moved in. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I saw this place, which I'm sure either I'm gonna share a clip of now or you may have seen it in the intro. It was super dark, had these like raggedy brown curtains hanging from the ceiling. So you can't even really get into how I feel right now because I don't have time. I need to get practical. The goal for today is just to start packing, like packing anything. It's the start of the evening on Thursday. I have a little bit of time tomorrow on Friday, but again, it's gonna be three or four, like final, final New York goodbyes for whoever is still left in the city. Monday, my stuff gets picked up. Obviously not taking everything. It's organized with a kind of a moving and logistics company where I've purchased like a hundred cubic feet of a shipping container. So that's how a lot of international moves are done. It goes into a shipping container, onto a ship, and then to the destination. With the way that everything is timed and the way things slow down over Christmas, I think it will take longer, which will actually be good because it kind of gives more time. But yes, many have gone before me and now it is my turn. These waves of people leaving to go home and I feel like me and some other people have been the last people standing in our age group in New York. And now it's time for me to go. And it's bittersweet. And for anyone moving or leaving a place or about to go somewhere new, know that it's normal, that everything seems perfect right before you leave. But I think I'll be better 
equipped to chat about it when I'm not stressing over the actual practicality of moving. I have not slept properly. Sorting through the clothes is what I want to get cracking on today. Because I had a minimum on my container and I think I'll have room, I am gonna be taking my chair over here, the dining table and the other two dining chairs. Some of my vintage lamps and mirrors, they'll be coming with me. Yeah, if you have any questions for me about the move or anything related to this video or my journey and my time in New York, I will make sure to do kind of like a Q&A maybe in the next video. So you can leave the comments below. I'll probably do a question box on Instagram at some point as well. Some of you probably saw this coming. I've been trying to keep the exact date quite under wraps. It honestly feels so good to freaking start. So I bought these moving totes and the moving people said that it's fine. I didn't really want to do cardboard boxes. It's just awkward and annoying and I hate like making the box with the tape and everything. Voila! I cannot wait to get rid of a ton of stuff that I haven't worn in a long time. Main priority for shipping things home is obviously pieces that I love. But also just like heirloom pieces. Great like vintage items or things that I potentially want to pass down or revisit from years to come because here's the thing my mom was like an 80s fashion queen she was strutting her stuff she loved fashion always had like the coolest stuff spent all her money on clothes basically did that woman keep me a single item no so i'm not making the same mistake i'm gonna have to switch down to lower quality because this is gonna be probably a time lapse situation I'm gonna just make a huge mess around here. Big fan of piles, like donation pile, keep pile. That's gonna be the plan of action. Lighting my favorite candle of all time. It's Burberry Black Amber. It's discontinued and I've held onto it for seven years. Enjoying the last of it. Day two, let's get it. I'm gonna go hang these posters for the last things I wanna get rid of. Fingers crossed, we'll sell a few more things. Current lineup for shoes that I'm shipping home. And this is what I'm planning to bring to Vancouver, which feels kind of excessive, but I think I'm just gonna give myself the grace. And if they fit, I'm bringing them. I'm not doing so bad. This is like the large size away suitcase. So I have my shoes, all of the pants that I need for Vancouver, and almost all of the jackets. I think there's five or six jackets in there, two cardigans, and then I also have a medium away suitcase and a carry on. So, so far, feeling confident on what I'm bringing to Vancouver. This is going by space, not by weight, because I cannot bear to leave this like weighted textile art blanket throw behind. I'm from a textile and design uni background, so like I just, I love. This was the first bougie piece of like textile art, I guess, that I could afford. All of my favorite blankies are coming. Okay, I'm stopping there for today, but we got most of the closet emptied for my 10th farewell dinner and drinks. Doing a bit of a double date with Kelsey and Jared, so that'll be fun because I've never met. 
jarred before. Stay tuned. Kelsey, if you're watching this, I just told my boyfriend how you're always chronically early. Thankfully, we're on time, but he said he respects you for that. Couldn't be me. Always five to seven minutes late. Running on time, we're running on time. So this will be my last outfit of the night. In this loft, potentially. So this is the, the fish. I'm wearing the platform loafers, which I think I made the right decision on bringing to Vancouver because they give me a bit of extra height. These kind of V-cut pants. They're just like leggings, but a little bit of ruching in the front. I found these on the whole unpacking journey as well. I'm so glad they did because they're kind of just like going out leggings. And I've just been so averse to anything tight recently. This cute kind of 90s cut top. Just a little outfit. It's a balmy evening this evening. It's like 25 degrees, which is insane. Yeah, I've been very stressed, so it'd be nice to relax. Have a drink or two. We're going to dosha or dochats, whatever you want to say it. Do this crab and artichoke dip with bread, and I've been dreaming about it. So yeah, that's us. See you later. Day three, things are getting serious. Be my first full day packing. Couch that's been with me for two apartments, like for about five years now, five, five and a half years, is getting picked up in two hours. Mirror is sold. My other mirror back there is sold. I'm gonna get everything into luggage cases just to see exactly where I'm at. A little full circle moment is, I don't know when you remember when I moved in, there was like a big tree here. We have a new, sort of plant friend i don't know if you can see it went from nothing to like this long in about a month and a half i've also been propagating planty plant and take her with me i'm going to smuggle her in my pocket or something because she needs to live on like i'm going to give main main planty plant now that it's had like a refresh and it's been repotted and life is good for the next few years i think in that pot i'm gonna give it to my neighbors i know that plant has such good energy i just want to give it to people that also have good energy anyways let's crack on about that little Japanese bakery it opened up kind of on the main Wyckoff Street. I love it there, they have everything. Today I just had to buy all of the things. It's so cheap. The amount of food that we just got for 20 quid. Like to be honest, the matcha was probably the most expensive thing. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Happy food test. We've got a tempura prawn or shrimp as the Americans say spinach, lettuce, and like a curry mayo. Like, it's not gonna blow your socks off, but it's just like good cheap food. Good morning. The company just called in classic New York fashion. They are not arriving at 8.30 to nine. They're arriving at 10. I didn't cry so far during this move. I have not cried and I have not gotten super frustrated at my boyfriend, which is, which is good. I feel like it was a good test of our relationship after almost three years. I think that they actually provide like a lot of the packing, like the supplies and stuff. We didn't even bother wrapping the chairs and tables. I'm just gonna wait till they get here and see what they say. Kind of welcomed it because it just meant we got to stop last night. So yes, it's very much real now. And I don't know, I just had a thought lying in bed this morning. I was just like, oh yeah. It's just one of those things you can't like imagine yourself moving out of a place and then it happens and you're like, oh yeah, it's like the other times that I've moved out of a place, you know, it's fine. Like once your stuff starts coming down off the walls, um, it doesn't really feel like your home anymore. Like in my real life, I've been minimizing the importance of this move, I guess. I didn't want to make this a big deal. I didn't want to make like 20 videos about me leaving New York and blah, blah, blah. Cause then it would be a big deal to me. Then it would cause me anxiety.
And just like that. Oh my god, it's so bare. This is where I saw my clothes, other people's clothes in Bushwick, because it was the most convenient and they buy stuff a little bit like Beacon's Closet and what's the other one? Buffalo Exchange. I made $300 for my clothes, which is more than I expected. All of the stuff that I have sold for the apartment and my clothes going towards those moving charges. If you're wondering what an international move costs, like the one I'm doing uh, for everything that was picked up today, which was also like double packed and wrapped by the team who were great. Like they came in and did everything in an hour. I just extra wrapped my stuff because I wanted to make sure like just in case it was in storage for a while that it was protected from moisture and like all of that kind of stuff. It's about $1,700. <laughs> you have to be kind of careful with what companies you use because sometimes they can like slap you with another invoice that you weren't expecting but that's all in i also sold some stuff on the real real i'm kind of confident that once the sales come through on those i think i'll have covered the cost of the move i'm the type of girl math that likes to just cancel out costs oh they really came through on one of the last iced caps look at that froth that ceramic initially we were just going to share chicken cutlet but they had our other favorite sandwich the turkey raspberry jam we're doing a splitsies situation even though i won't be here anymore come down to la cantine support especially if you're irish because this is basically like a bougie chicken fillet roll my particular order is the chicken cutlet the classic chicken cutlet but i add red onion i add comped cheese and i substitute the homemade mayo that they do for their homemade garlic aioli sometimes sprinkle a little bit of their hot sauce in there so good i guess now that i'm moving out i can show you my building but uh yeah i lived on the corner of cypress and troutman street yeah luxury building prices but unfortunately not luxury building amenities halloween but make it corporate the last solo walk maria hernandez look how automated excuse me I know a lot of people shit on Maria Hernandez, but she has her moments, okay? I love her. Bye, squirrel friends. As soon as it gets chilly again, you pretty much have this park to yourself. She's a talking, she's a talking. Oh, she has a few leaves left. Speaking of trees, I had to come visit my tree. How you shamelessly tree hug, you just kind of like lean and look nonchalant and every day of the pandemic sitting under under this tree i wrote really terrible poetry under this tree i fell in love under this tree had some of the worst phone calls of my life under this tree got hit on more times than i can imagine wearing a mask under this tree favorite tree out of the whole park for sure the majority of my introspection the perspectives that I've developed and shared on the vlogs, like a lot of it just like happened here. Anyone with anxiety will understand like when you have a spot, this ground was my grounding spot. The first year I never even came to this park. I thought it was crazy and it was chaotic and it is, like it is a chaotic park. Next is Main Street. It's a place that on paper is very hard to relax in. And seeing the difference in me from then to now, like three years later, I can see how far I've come. Being able to see the beauty through the chaos, through the mess, through the noise and find peace in it all. Obviously that's just like a life journey and something that happens across the board. But this place, be in harmony with the chaos of this park is kind of like my measure, I think, for how far I feel like I've come. A weird twist of events. <laughs> my best friend, she like became my best friend in New York. Went to uni together, we moved here like around the same time, I think a month or two apart. She is leaving on the same day as me. How weird is that? She's moving to Copenhagen and then maybe London, but her flight is at the same time she's gonna pick us up uh in an uber and i think we're all gonna go to the airport early because we haven't had a chance to hang out this week have one last drink but it's just so weird like that whole synchronicity in itself making the big step of coming here but also kind of the reassurance that we're also leaving not leaving one or the other behind you know but yeah it wasn't planned it just sort of worked out that way the last time we met she was just like yeah it's been a great eight years hasn't it Apparently I've been in New York for eight years. I've been telling everyone that I've been here for seven and we did the math and I've actually been here for eight, which is which is kind of annoying because I liked the thought of a Psycho 7 ending. Look 
at this. I've always wanted to come to the TWA hotel, which is stuck on to Terminal 5, which is the JetBlue terminal that I always fly to, to Vancouver. And there's Natalia. It's basically like this hotel that they've styled in this 60s kind of theme. How divine. Oh my God, weak for this.